the U.S. retail industry has been undergoing some drastic changes in recent years. We have lost thousands of iconic stores and seen many popular brands disappearing from our economic landscape in a phenomenon known as the retail apocalypse. Now, the latest reports show that the ongoing recession is forcing some of the biggest retailers in America, including names like Nike, to conduct mass store closings once again as they rush to cut costs and boost their profit margins before consumer demand declines even further in the months ahead. Industry insiders expect retail bankruptcies to soar this year, with many companies being overwhelmed by an oversupply crisis and the slowest sales growth recorded since 2008. We have a lot to cover in this video, but before moving on, we kindly ask for your support with a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Even the brands that survived the hostile economic environment that emerged with the pandemic aren't safe from the uncertainty brought on by the economic downturn that's now unfolding all across the nation. In fact, in recent weeks, some retail favorites have been closing stores in droves as the retail apocalypse comes back with a vengeance. The combination of declining sales, rising operational costs, slower foot traffic, and changing consumer patterns are pushing many popular brands to shut up brick and mortar locations before a full blown recession wreak havoc on their bottom lines as they attempt to weather the storm that is ahead. Titans like Walmart aren't immune from facing steep financial losses, and according to CEO Doug McMillan, the company plans to close 160 stores in the near future. In the fourth quarter of 2020, the retail giant pointed to rising levels of retail theft as one of the reasons why store shutdowns would occur. As it tried to curb these types of delinquencies, the company has implemented a host of anti-theft devices, but that resulted in swift backlash from customers. Other grocery chains like Piggly Wiggly and IGA Supermarkets announced in January they'll start closing multiple locations for good very soon. An IGA spokesperson said that the locations set to permanently close have seen reduced foot traffic and negative profits for several quarters in a row. The chain, which operates over a thousand stores across the U.S., has been struggling with declining revenue since mid-2021 when inflation started to take a toll on businesses' balance sheets. We've enjoyed taking care of the customers, there just wasn't enough of them, the spokesperson said. Meanwhile, in the apparel sector, things are looking ugly. With Americans cutting back on discretionary purchases, many brands are watching sales collapse and they're being left with no alternative other than closing up shop. That's the case with Old Navy. The retailer announced plans to close 350 stores by the end of 2023. Other beloved stores like Talbot's, Banana Republic, and Abercrombie & Fitch are the latest to shut up some of their stores, Yahoo reports. The scenario is looking so bleak that even consolidated brands like Nike are closing dozens of stores starting in locations in Ohio, Seattle, and New York City, the company confirmed to the Inquirer. Nike's inventory glut sent the company's stock to the lowest level in 20 years. Before the health crisis, the sports retailer was already experiencing a cash flow crisis, and tightening credit conditions are certainly not helping the situation. Similarly, sports goods chain Olympia Sports announced it would be shutting down for good before the end of the year. The main based retailer is closing all 35 of its remaining stores and going out of business completely by September after 47 years in business. And while that might have been one of the biggest losses in the sports sector, it wasn't the only one. Both Peloton and SoulCycle confirmed they will be closing locations in the coming months. SoulCycle already have closed 20 of its 83 U.S. studios last month. Meanwhile, Peloton CEO Barry McCarthy told employees in a memo that the company was planning a significant and aggressive reduction of its retail footprint in North America in 2023. At the same time, 
America may also have to say goodbye to its biggest party supply store. On January 14th, Party City filed for bankruptcy, weighed down by competition and years of financial losses. Party City's monthly sales have been dropping by about 8% CNN reports. In 2021, the company projected sales to remain flat after losing money every year between 2019 and 2021 and revealing that it was on track to lose up to $199 million in the fourth quarter alone. Many other struggling chains are at a heightened risk of bankruptcy as consumer spending softens. Physical stores are facing a serious crisis as shoppers increasingly turn to e-commerce over going into an actual location. The new wave of turbulence in the sector comes as the end of 2022 has seen an uptick in loan defaults from multiple retailers. But this time around, industry experts say that America's classic department stores are at the highest risk of going under. Reports show that in the past seven years, around 40% of the nation's department stores have closed. A new forecast shared by UPS analysts warns that national chains will be forced to shutter some brick and mortar locations to better position themselves for the recession that is at our door. Even those that survived the combined challenges of the retail apocalypse, which devastated the industry from 2017 to 2020, and the pandemic shutdowns. That's because months of inflation and a looming recession are eating into sales at mid-tier retailers, the analysts highlighted. These trends are likely not good for department stores, as both luxury companies as well as off-price retailers compete directly with department stores. UBS analysts Jay Sol, Maurizio Cerna, Shoshana Pollock, and Tiffany Agard wrote, We expect department stores to close locations as challenges persist. Since the burst of the financial crisis, retailers' financial condition has been volatile. The past two decades have actually been disastrous for American retail companies, particularly malls and department stores. Insider reports that as many as 9,300 stores closed in 2019, the result of these brands being saddled with mountains of debt at a time when shoppers were discovered they could purchase whatever they want with a few simple clicks. The health crisis has only thrown fuel on an already existing fire, as the industry was hit with an unprecedented number of store closures. According to UBS, the retail industry lost almost 2,000 stores in less than a year. At that time, those closures benefited the stores that remained. Retailers like Macy's, Nordstrom, and Kohl's were able to gain market share by relying on brand partnerships beauty sales, and off-price stores to drive sales and adopting new methods to get customers to shop in stores. Fast forward to today. Macy's, Nordstrom, and Kohl's are the latest victims of the unforgiving retail apocalypse. The three brands are shuttering hundreds of stores in California, Washington, New Jersey, Florida, Texas, Hawaii, North Carolina, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, New York, Illinois, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Indiana. Household name Bed Bath & Beyond is fighting a debt crisis and has already closed 150 stores nationwide. Sears is in a similar situation with 115 impending closures. With sales growth remaining flat for almost three quarters in a row, conditions are not improving for department stores. Actually, new data released by the Commerce Department shows that department store sales were down by nearly 3% during the holiday season compared to the same time a year prior. UBS analysts predict department store sales will remain under pressure this year, which may lead manufacturers to undercut production at factories. Overall, retail sales in the United States fell by the most in a year in December, and manufacturing output also recorded its biggest drop in nearly two years last month. On Black Friday, foot traffic decline was even more pronounced when compared with 2019. Indoor mall foot traffic was down 14.2% compared with the last pre-pandemic holiday season, 
while outlet malls declined 17.8% and open-air lifestyle centers dipped 11.7%. Consumers are likely retrenching during a time of economic uncertainty, said Jeffrey Roach, chief economist at LPL Financial. The trajectory for the economy is weakening and recession risks are rising for 2023. Big department stores are expected to continue closing storefronts because of economic instability in America's middle class. As we have previously reported here on Epic Economist, middle income earners are facing mounting difficulties to make ends meet. They're seeing their purchasing power evaporate right before their eyes and they're bracing for the arrival of a new economic crisis. A survey conducted by The Conversation discovered that consumer trends right now are looking a lot like those observed during the Great Recession. Overall, the most alarming conclusion from our research is that consumers are reporting consumption behaviors typically exhibited in 2009, researchers noted. One data point stands out. An overwhelming majority of Americans, 72% said they were concerned about their job security, while almost 45% indicated they were very or extremely worried about their financial situation. Almost 80% of respondents said they are either moderately, very, or extremely concerned about the surge in prices, the survey found. The closure of mid-tier retail stores may be accelerated by many other factors, one of which is the overwhelming amount of excess inventory that's become a burden for these retailers. The sudden change in consumer spending habits, the disruption of supply chains, and the decline in foot traffic to shopping centers and other retail areas have greatly impacted their ability to sell their merchandise as planned. A recent analysis conducted by Alex Partners and reported in Bloomberg found that the average inventory level of the top 20 public apparel companies in the U.S. has increased by 26% compared to the pre-pandemic period in 2019. Despite their efforts to offer discounts, it is unlikely that they will be able to move a large portion of their inventory due to the current economic climate where consumers are being more cautious with their spending. The expected growth rate of U.S. retail sales is also forecasted to slow down, with a predicted increase of only 2.9% in 2023 compared to the 8.7% growth rate that was expected. With inflation cooling slowly, the outlook for mid-tier retailers is dim. I suspect there's going to be a whole round of restructures, bankruptcies, all sorts of upheaval as we approach the end of the year into next year, the director of retail studies at Columbia University, Mark Cohen, said to Insider. These middle players like Macy's and Nordstrom are kind of trapped, he added. All of this is leading many malls and shopping centers to become ghost towns, leaving once thriving commercial areas to become blighted and abandoned. Since the 1990s, the growth rate of shopping malls was over twice the population's growth. In contrast, mall visits declined by 50% between 2010 and 2013, and the trend kept on going until this very day, with more and more stores shutting down, relocating, or rethinking their business strategies Closures could become a reality for many of the malls that are left nationwide. Nick Egalanian, president of retail consultancy SiteWorks, believes only about 150 malls will survive the next few decades. At the peak of mall shopping, there were around 2,500 of them. Currently, there are only about 600 left, he explained. The truth is that dead malls are on the rise all over America. They are described as shopping centers with high vacancy rates or low consumer traffic levels or places that are dated or deteriorating in some manner. They are also a symbol of declining economic prosperity, once bustling centers of commerce and community. These sprawling structures now stand as decaying reminders of a bygone era. Empty storefronts and abandoned parking lots are all that remain of what were once displays of our prosperity, 
where people went to shop, they went to socialize, they went to connect. As a result, many communities are now left with vast spaces that once housed stores and restaurants but now serve no purpose. These abandoned structures not only reflect the economic struggles of the past, but also raise questions about the future of American retail and the role of physical retail spaces in our rapidly changing world. Furthermore, the once thriving communities that surrounded these centers now face the daunting prospect of urban decay, as the abandoned buildings, empty lots left in the wake of the retail apocalypse become magnets for social ills. What lies ahead for American retail remains shrouded in darkness, and the impact of the retail apocalypse will haunt us for generations to come. This crisis has cast a long shadow over America, and its consequences will be felt far into the future, leaving us to ponder the grim reality of a world without physical retail stores. What are your views? We look forward to your comments under this video, and thank you for watching.